Thank you. So uh, my talk today will not be very scientific like uh, all the previous talks, but uh, I will present uh, some solution we come up with to help you guys or to help the reference station operator to provide more reliable data and more accurate data for the users. So I will be talking about improving the resilience of interference of a GNSS reference station. And the outline of my talk today will be just a quick talk about what is an interference for a GNSS reference station, what are the interference sources, uh, the solutions that Leica Geosystems uh, is presenting. I will show you some test examples, uh, showing you the performance of the solution we came up with, and then I will find, uh, end with a summary. So when we say interference for GNSS reference station, it's a phenomenon where there are undesired signals. So uh, we all talk about GNSS signals, but our receivers, the GNSS receivers, receive other signals, especially today. We have a lot, uh, lot of transmitters everywhere. Electronics are uh, being used everywhere now. So there are a lot of undesired signals that come into the receivers. And this uh, receiver, uh, these signals will disturb the operation of the receiver. It will make him make it not work properly. Uh, the consequences can be partial of uh, or total loss of log. This means that you will have, uh, for example, data gaps in your row and in, in the raw data that the station is uh, sending. You will have reduced or noisy SNR. So for the people. For, for the people who doesn't know SNR, this is a signal to noise ratio. It's a, it's a parameter used to, to measure the quality of the, the signal received. Uh, if it's bad, it means that the, op, that the uh, measurement could be not very accurate, could be noisy. And uh, this leads overall a reduced ability of the receiver to operate properly. So in pr for providing reliable data, observation, correction, and computing, of course, a position. What are the interference sources mainly that the GNSS reference station today is, is suffering from? There are the in-band, so these are the signals that come within the band of interest. So uh, we all hear about L1, L2, L5, so these are the band that the GNSS receiver uh, is able to receive signals on it. And then with this in span, sometimes we have uh, uh, signals received. This can come from intentional jammers, for example, uh, or other RF spectrum, legal or not. You can go to eBay, you can buy for 10 euros a jammer, and you can jam a, radio, a radius of one or two kilometer very easily. So this can be someone with intentionally or unintentionally. There are near bands, so close to the band where GNSS signals has to be received. This can come from sources like Global Star and Long Range Air Traffic Control Radar. So uh, if someone of you use GPS next or GNSS receiver next to a airport, you can clearly see that uh, the accuracy there and the uh, operation of the receiver is not quite good as if you are far further from the airport. And there is out of band harmonics, so signal has harmonics, so it doesn't need to be in the in band of the receiver, it can have harmonics, and then this harmonics can end up within the band of the interest, and this will further harm also the receiver. And least is the self interference, so we all use electronics, this is inside the receiver, and there are other uh, chips or equipments inside the receiver that can harm also the. Uh, operation of the receiver. What can we do to, to fight this? The first thing is to find the source and shut it down. But unfortunately, this is not so easy because first you need to know on which frequency the source is sending the, uh, the interference. And sometimes we cannot shut down this interference because they can be legal, they can be uh, for government or for another operational uh, entity. So to do this, we make our receiver more powerful in order to mitigate the interference. So uh, Leica Geosystems proposed a solution. It's called Interference Toolkit. Uh, it's a software upgradable on the receiver, so there is no hardware needed. You only need to upgrade the firmware running on the receiver. And that's, this will allow the user many functionality. 
One of them is to visualize the frequency spectrum. For the frequency spectrum is the spectrum where you can see what frequencies are the, the, the receiver is, uh, is seeing. Uh, I'll show you an example how it looks like a frequency spectrum after and how visually you can detect an interference or not. And then uh, ITK will allow the receiver to, automatic det to automatically detect the interference in a first step. And then in a second step, either use an, uh, the user interaction, so the user will apply some mitigation technique or an automatic mitigation technique. The mitigation technique are three modes, so HDR mode, so it's a high dynamic range mode performing a wideband mitigation. This will allow the user to increase the gain within the band of interest by increasing the resolution of the analog to digital converter. Uh, this might sound a little bit technical, but generally this means that increasing the gain of the receiver in the band of interest. So once you enable the HDR mode, the receiver will uh, have more power consumption, more or less from 5 to 10 percent, but it will allow uh, more gain in the band of interest, which will reduce the impact of the interferer. And the other two is the filter mode, so either a bandpass filter or an adaptive uh, notch filter. A bandpass filter is a filter that will allow the signals to pass within a band of interest and then it will reject anything else. And the notch filter, it's the opposite behavior. It will, allow, it will not allow uh, signals or, uh, to pass within a certain band and then it will allow it pass with the other band. I will show you some examples about the three modes and uh, the impact on the receiver when we apply such mitigation in the presence of interference. The test examples will be an in-band continuous wave. So we have uh, an in-band uh, a jammer, which is jamming the receiver uh, within the GPS L1 band. Out of band, narrow band receiver, for example, uh, a CDMA signal on uh, close to GLONASS and then out of band wide band signal like for example LTE which is the cellular radio signals and uh, the performance of the receiver before and after mitigation are characterized by the average GPS carrier to nose ratio the number of satellites tracked and the position accuracy uh, I want to stress out that the uh, results can be applicable on other signals but for the sake of the time now we chose only GPS L1 so uh, just to show you how can be a, a spectrum for a GPS uh, L1 signal. So the red one is a wide band. This is uh, mainly used by the receivers to track most of the signals on the L1 band. For example, GPS L1, GLONASS L1, Beidou B1, and Galileo E1. So more and more the, we need the wide band uh, to, in order to detect and to, correct, uh, to uh, track all the signals. And this is similar on the L2, for example, on and the L5 band. Uh, the green, is, uh, the green uh, spectrum is the one that concentrates only on the GPS L1. And we can see that we have a little bit this high peak on the GPS. This is where our filter is concentrated to grab the GPS L1 signal in order to track it, and uh, acquire and track it. So this is an example of a healthy GPS L1 spectrum. Now in the presence of interferer, so in-band continuous wave, we can see here, this peak here, we have an interference in the in-band, so close to the GPS L1 band here, and uh, it has much higher power than the uh, GPS L1 signal itself. In order to mitigate it, we apply HDR mode and notch filters. Uh, so we can see here we applied the, a notch filter. This is a notch filter. It means that uh, within a frequency of band of interest we reduce, we reduce uh, the, the power of the signal and at the same time we increase the power of the signal within the band of interest. To see the impact of, of this, this is the performance of the receiver before mitigation and this is after mitigation. So uh, the first graph on top, this is the average uh, carrier to nose ratio of all satellite uh, in view. And then we can see that uh, it is within 30, 37, 30, not so clear, but after mitigation, we increased the carrier to nose ratio or the SNR by almost 5 dB, 4 to 5 dB. 
We can see that the number of satellites tracked is between six and eight satellites, and after mitigation, we increased between 10 and 12 satellites, so also the number of satellites increased. And the last graph below is the 3D RTK position error, so when we compute the receiver position, we can see it's very noisy in the presence of interference. However, after mitigation, we can see that it is even less than two centimeter accuracy. So this shows uh, really the performance when we apply the snotch filter and HDR to reject the interference. A second uh, example is a narrow band interferer. For example, this is a signal from Global Star. We can see now if we uh, remember the, the, the healthy one, and then we can see here, we can see that the spectrum is very disturbed due to the fact that we have a narrow band with a very high power. And we can see how the signal is disturbed on the GPS L1. After applying the filter, so here we applied uh, an HDR mode only, we can see that it's a little bit more flat. It's a little bit more, we can see better that the band was in GPS. And then this can be shown better when we see the results. So also we increase the average carrier to nose ratio around four to five dB. Also we can see that the number of satellites tracked is all the time almost 10, which allows a much better position also in the centimeter accuracy. Here we can see due to this presence how the RTK uncertainty is increasing with time. And then here it dropped after applying the, uh, the mitigation. And the final example is uh, 10 megahertz LTE. So uh, this is a harmonic which ended up in the band of interest and then also it disturbed our uh, frequency of interest around GPS L1. And also after applying the filters, we can see here that we can see better the GPS L1. In this case, the receiver was not at all able to compute any position because it was not tracking more than four satellites and the average carrier to nose ratio was very low. And after mitigation, we can see that we almost tracked all the visible satellites and the carrier to nose is much better. Also, the position accuracy is within the two centimeter requirement. This will end up my talk. So uh, the ITK, it's a power, uh, it's a tool that will allow you to have a power spectral on the receiver. Um, also, it allows you mitigation technology. It is demonstrated and will become available as a, as a future software upgrade on Leica GR30 and GR50 receivers. It has three efficient interference rejections, the in-band continuous wave, out-band, narrow-band, and out-of-band, wide-band. So all this interference, the receiver will be able to, to, uh, to fight. The satellite tracking and signal quality can be largely preserved, and uh, which means a higher quality, precise positioning remains possible.